I can't believe this video is finally coming out into the world. Welcome here, everybody. Earlier this year, I headed out to Alberta to visit Ethan Hardy because Ethan has made a name for himself in the blacksmithing community for making hammers. So today, Ethan and I are gonna be starting to work on the collaborative cross peen hammer. I'm so excited about this. This will be the first ever blacksmithing tool that I'm gonna launch for sale. Pumped, sun is just coming up. Absolute gorgeous day here in Alberta. Let's get this thing underway. Big power hammer with a little anvil hanging off the back. Quiet that hammer is because it's a utility hammer. It looks so crazy. finish up here it's like 11 30 and uh it's been an awesome day just playing with different uh proportions on the hammer and stuff so ethan's gonna send me home with a couple things i'm gonna try out and then i'm excited about the next step but ethan thanks so much for having me out you're welcome and thanks uh, for coming letting me try this beast my goodness that is a machine ethan was able to source of 1912 train rail to make these hammers from because i wanted this hammer to be special in many ways i wanted it to be from reclaimed steel, train rail, 100 years old. I wanted it to be a, cr a cross peen hammer because that's my favorite forging hammer. Wanted it to be about the three pound weight. Wanted to have a serial number on it. So then Ethan got the hammers finished up. I headed back to Alberta to take a look and see what these hammers look like. All right, here we go guys, seeing some ha Oh my, Ethan, that is, Oh guys, you gotta check this out. This is crazy. Oh man, is so many hammers. Oh, what are we doing? Look at this. Dude, this is insane. Ethan, this is awesome. I know. It's this is yeah. awesome. Oh, we gotta go forge something right now, like seriously. <laughs> Look at all of these hammers, guys. That is so <laughs> Hammers are loaded, and out. Get these guys back to the shop. <laughs> Made it here, it was like 1,500 kilometers the canopy leaks a little bit this is like the worst one so i got to clean a couple of these up because they rusted on me this is the first batch that are all finished here ready for oiling and this is the exciting part because we're going to put the same finish that I put on the axes. It's gonna look so, so cool. These are the first uh, Blackhawk axes going out, so everybody who's pre-ordered a Blackhawk axe, get ready, it's coming. These are, oh, should we open it up just to see? We're getting totally distracted here. Oh, oh my stinking goodness. So that's what the hammer's gonna look like for color wise. Oh, 
That is such a sweet axe. Martin's just got these boxes set up. He's just spraying them down with a special recipe. Everybody give it up for Martin for just slaying these boxes for you. Just crushing it. Look at this. So I am ecstatic today to be able to announce that this is the launch of the first cross peen hammer that I collaboratively built with Ethan. Available online at my website. Link is down below. This is the first forging tool, blacksmithing tool that I've ever sold. Martin, this is like a, an unboxing experience on your own product. It's kind of a weird concept. I don't think that's a real thing, but I'm feeling it right now. This is what you get. You get the box, paper. We'll write a little card in there saying thank you to you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. They, weigh, they range a little bit in weight. About a three pound hammer is what you're looking at. I told Ethan that I wanted the balance point pretty close to center, a little bit to the back. So that is something very different on a lot of cross peen hammers that you typically buy, you're not gonna have a really balanced feeling hammer in there. We left a 16 inch handle length on it. You can for sure trim it down to 14 inches. I just felt like it was nice to have a little bit of that extra go on there if you need it. It's got the nice rectangle handle. I'm a big fan of that, especially a big fan of uh, flat sides on my handles. And that just allows you to feel that tip like that when you're forging, which you're always adjusting for your angles. It's really important actually. We've got the serial number. We've got the date of the steel from the train rail. Then on the underside of the hammer, we have the uh, Ethan Hardy touch mark, Timothy Dick touch mark. What do you think? I think we should go over to the anvil and try this guy out. Wow, this is kind of a big moment. I'm taking off the titanium hammer. I've swung this for the last over two years. Putting on a steel hammer back on the anvil. Oh, yeah, that baby's got some mass to it. <sighs> so we're just gonna take the hammer through different things, trying out the different spots, the hammer, seeing how it all checks out, feels. First thing we're gonna do is lay down a nice point. If a hammer is dead flat, you have no control of it because you can never hit exactly where you want to. I know it sounds contrary to what you would think. So when you buy a hammer from a store, they're usually pretty flat and they have this super crispy line, this huge chamfer on the edge. And what the problem with that is, is by the time you round, so you have to dress it, right? So you round it in and then when you relieve the edges, you have such a radius edge due to that big chamfer that you actually lose the ability to tune in tight stuff on the corner of the hammer. So where I'm using that for an example is on this point, you know, right at the end here, when it was cold, I wanted to tune it in and I can use the edge of the hammer like this. Instead of working here, I can come in and still be in the same spot on the corner and kind of tune it in. It sounds like it's not a very important detail, but it's a detail that I like. Let's just forge this leaf out because there's a lot of processes in here that see how the hammer does. That's really cold, but because I could work it fast enough, 
and there's a big hammer. Working it cold like that enables me to see how the uh, face of the hammer sits into the steel because you can see how the light reflects off of it. Versus when it's hot, you can't see that. And that sucker's got some meat behind it compared to my titanium. Wow, that's awesome. I'm just taking it slow here, just playing, right? There you can see that some of that edge work is, is nice to be able to jump in there with the edge of your hammer. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, hopefully. All right, that's cool. Try out the cross bean here. So um, I don't know if you can see on camera, there's a bit of a ridge down the middle. I like to do that. And one of the things that I like on my cross bean hammers, which is what this has got, is the, the cross bean is actually relatively flat on the top. And so where that allows me to come in on this is a great example. I'm using this to draw it out because I want to move the material that way as fast as I can. But I don't want lots of divots is one reason. So if that was really rounded you get a lot of dividends. So I could interchange between, okay, I'm pretty far, just turn, do a little bit of smooth up, and I'm good to go. I don't have to do a lot with the face. It's a very small thing, but I like that. The other thing that I find really sweet about a cross peen that isn't too rounded, is you kind of have this, it, it is slightly rounded, but it's got a corner to it. And the importance of the corner is that the harder you lean in on your angle, the more aggressive you can scoop and push material. So if you want to move fast, you come in sharp and then you ease up. And then by the time you're easing up, you're basically coming into, you're still moving in that direction. But if you have to smooth out or flip to the face, you're pretty much at that finished surface. So you have more control over how your material moves because of that corner. Hopefully that makes sense. I like it. I like it a lot. The other thing that I like to do, and this is actually, with the corner this enable you don't have to have the corner but it helps with this i don't know why i'm using a leaf as an example i guess because it just has a lot of different elements to it some subtle subtle texture to that leaf that's fun. Let's draw out that leaf a little bit, taper that stem. Have some fun with that. See how the face goes. We've done a little bit of drawing down. So I'm using the cross bean to just spread that bar out this direction because I want to get wide, right? That's where the cross bean is so nice. I 
Not that I'm trying to oversell you on the cross bean hammer, but here's a great application where you can come in, tuck along that edge. And that makes this thing look visually straight when you look down it, which is great. In case you're wondering what I'm making, I'm totally just going improv here. Never made something like this before. That's the beauty of it. I got a finished idea though. All right, so uh, I'm gonna quickly do a little bit of work on this end. I wanna give it a good run for its money on a good drawdown operation. I mean, then we've kinda went through the stuff that I need to know. It's looking really good. I'm just so, so excited to offer this to you. Ready to ship, look at this. I'm just really excited about what this product stands for in the sense of like bringing something to the blacksmithing community for the first time ever. You know, blacksmithing's been something I've been a part of for a long time, but never uh, had something to offer, you know? If you would like one, I would be honored Privilege to send you one. Link is down below in my webs. Look at that box. It looks so good. Oh man. Link is down below of this video. All the serial number of the hammer go on the box just to make the box a little bit extra special. And then we can also just, when we're shipping out, know which, which one we're shipping out. Huge thank you to Ethan for being a part of this collaboration. Thank you to you for watching this video, subscribing. Thank you to all of you who will purchase one of these. It truly means a lot to me. And uh, I guess that's the end of this video. What a long journey it's been. Super, wow, look at that cross cut. That looks insane. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, keep the forge lit, hey? See you in the next one. Over and out. Mm -hmm.